welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, Kathy, it's uh, great to be uh, together again uh, today, and uh, we're excited to keep sharing uh, this aspect of finding truth uh, in a world of chaos. And um, uh, we're going to continue to to deal with the current issues uh, of the day, uh, go into the Word together, uh, and help you learn what it means to abide, and, and as well as uh, lots of other things that we've yeah. uh, received and we want to share with you. Um, and then one of the things that, as part of our uh, heart for you is to share uh, uh, insight into questions that you have that are personal. Uh, mm-hmm. What about this? How does this work? Um, and we know that's going to come up. So we urge you, and I have up there on the screen, uh, is for uh, you to uh, send in your questions. Uh, and if it's on YouTube, put it in the comment section uh, and that'll uh, come up and we'll look at those and answer those. And if you're doing it by podcast, uh, it's send in uh, email at questions at uh, afjministry.com, questions at afjministry.com. Uh, and we will take those and we'll answer them as we have been doing. And we want to continue to uh, to serve you in that way, uh, and make it real, because uh, it, it, this is this is how it works, mm-hmm. uh, is abiding is, well, what about this? Um, and what we can do is help you, lead you to places, and then you can uh, begin to experience, you know, all that God has you to, to experience. So we're excited about that. Um, so, uh, Kathy, last time we we talked about uh, the aspect of um, uh, marriage, uh, mm-hmm. the issues of conflict. Um, how does that uh, function? We 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 discussed that, you know, in our world of chaos, one of the things that's contributing to chaos is uh, this uh, difficulty that couples are having. Uh, they're right. believe they're believers. They know that well. It seems like we should be able to handle this, mm-hmm. but we're not, um, and we're struggling, um, and we're we're in conflict, we're in arguments, we're in opposition, um, and so what's the answer to that? And and we talked uh, last time about uh, well, you got to learn both of you to abide and have a heart to go seek God together, mm-hmm. um, and it takes a heart issue. Of, and basically based on a belief, you know, and that's one of the things that as I talk to couples uh, and I say this, that I can guarantee you that God will restore your marriage and get you to a beautiful place. And their comment is, you can't guarantee that. <laughs> um, what if God's will is for us to have this? And, and uh, I, I can point to scripture to say <laughs> it's absolutely not God's will. Right. Um, he said the two shall become one. Uh, I want you to enjoy life there. He says, when you dwell in unity, mm-hmm. I will command blessing. Uh, so it's not fuzzy in scripture. So it's not a matter of, well, how can you guarantee that? Um, and the reason I can guarantee it is that um, I've experienced it mm-hmm. uh, through my walk with God. I've seen him restore things. I've seen him restore uh, marriages. I've seen him restore uh, life together when there was difficulty. Um, and that's why I can guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then people say, well, so you're telling me I can, you can guarantee that my marriage can be restored. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now there's a condition uh, to that. And that is you have a heart to go, heart to seek God, right. heart, heart to learn what it means to abide and hear God's voice and let him guide you and direct you. Uh, if you both have a heart for that, Absolutely, it's going to happen. Right. Uh, it's absolute. Um, and as we look at taking that broader uh, today, um, one of the issues of chaos is that people are experiencing difficulty. Uh, there's lots of things in their life that are coming against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're uh, saying, well, life used to be like this. But now with COVID, with the economy, with 
uh, the government rules of our church not being able to meet or they can meet only conditionally, it's all changing. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm experiencing hardship. I'm experiencing difficulty of things in my life that just aren't working. Um, I'm not getting answers about my business. I'm not getting answers about our family. Uh, I'm not getting answers about uh, the church. And um, my church doesn't want to meet or they want to meet in a certain way. And I'm thinking I'm losing my fellowship. Uh, mm -hmm. Should I go do something else? Um, and is this is this thought legitimate that I have that, you know, I've been in this church for a long time, but now they're not really functioning well. Um, mm. So I have difficulty with that. Um, or I have changes in my business uh, uh, model or um, financially, I, I uh, made it through COVID, but now I have a big burden on top of me. Mm -hmm. uh, so these issues of, of difficulty. Uh, and so as we look at that, uh, it's contributing to the chaos. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because my heart, again, lead, you know, what's, what's chaos? What, what does chaos do? When things aren't ordered, when things aren't normal, what we consider to be normal, and I know and I know and I know what, what I can predict, um, I go to fear. Yes. And, then, and then I go to worry and go to anxiety about, well, if this doesn't turn out well, which I can see it possibly not, mm -hmm. um, I could lose my, my investments. I could lose my business. I could lose things. Or I've already borrowed a lot of money to get through, and now I'm heavily burdened by debt, mm -hmm. uh, which, by the way, is a, is a big issue right now. I was uh, going to say, there's a lot of people, really, that's a reality for a lot of people right now. Yeah. Uh, and so as we look at this uh, opposition, uh, one of the issues is, um, well, what's the remedy for that? Uh, what's, mm -hmm. the, what's the uh, response that God has for that? And uh, a couple of things, we won't get into all the depth of this, but, um, uh, and by the way, we do have a course actually, <laughs> Overcoming Adversity uh, on our website. Oh, that's a good one too. It's yeah. really good uh, because it goes into all the nuances of what's causing the adversity uh, and then how do I respond to that as to what God will do to, he said he's going to guarantee uh, fixing it, restoring it, making it work. Uh, well, I need to know certain things. So it's not a, mm -hmm. see, it's not a generic thing. And this is where people get stuck is they say, well, I guess all adversity is from God because mm -hmm. isn't he uh, have a will and I'm a child of his. So that doesn't everything that happened is God's will. Mm. Um, so I guess the adversity is from him and I'm just supposed to put up with it and, and suffer through it. Uh, even though it doesn't make sense to you. Right. Like why would, why would God, who's a loving God treat me this way? But they say, well, it's for your education. It's for your spiritual growth. Um, uh, and there is an element of that because, uh, when God is testing your faith, he mm -hmm. actually, he actually brings the adversity. Uh, but it's only around that. It's only around testing your faith, which means you're in relationship with him and you're hearing the things that he's saying, here's what I want to do. Do you believe it? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you say, I, yeah, I believe that, he said, well, let's go find out. Um, and he tests you with an adversity. Mm -hmm. And then he watches your reaction. Do you get through it and say, well, it doesn't matter because God has said he's going to resolve this. I trust it. And I'm not going to go to fretting, worry, and fear, uh, and I passed the test. Or mm -hmm. I didn't pass the test, and this adversity came, and I struggled with it, and I said, uh-oh, uh, I think it's not going to work, and you didn't pass that test. And God said, that's okay. Um, let me uh, help you understand that you're just not, you haven't stayed with me long enough, because I'm the author and finisher of faith, mm -hmm. you know, which is what we'll get into, uh, that uh, I'm the one that has to give you the faith. And so when you're, when you pass, when you don't pass the test, it doesn't mean abandon it. It means stay in there longer. Mm -hmm. I've got to, I've got to give you the faith, but there's other sources, uh, of adversity. Uh, one of the questions we had was, um, how do I know, uh, and how do I react when I, when I understand it's a, a demonic attack, a mm. satanic attack, or it's because I caused it because I was in the flesh. Well, those are two separate things mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, is the, is the enemy going to work to attack you? Yes. Yes. Uh, because, and again, uh, the picture we're trying to portray is that uh, it's clear in scripture 
uh, that it says the whole world is under the control of the evil one, both prior uh, to the resurrection and, and post-resurrection. Uh, so he's still controlling this uh, world, what's called entropy. Everything is going left by itself is going to destruction. So he's working to destroy, kill, and, and, and steal the things of our life. And because we, we live in that world, we're not exempt from that. And Jesus said, mm-hmm. in, the world, in the world, you're going to have this trouble. Um, and then while we're in that world, see, we have the, the privilege of joining his kingdom. Of, mm-hmm. of living in his kingdom, which is way more powerful than the world. So now we're in both places. Yeah, we're in the world and, and functioning with the world because we're dealing with, with uh, the stuff of the world, people of the world, uh, customers, vendors, relatives, uh, people at church, uh, et cetera. They're, they're operating from a worldly perspective. And the enemy is using that to attack you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you could have a, uh, a business situation where uh, all of a sudden something irrational happens on the part of a customer or the part of a vendor. Um, and it doesn't make any sense to you. And God said, yeah, because this is a spiritual attack. This mm-hmm. is the enemy coming against you. Uh, and in that case, the answer is to recognize the authority, the power uh, that we have uh, that's automatic, actually. Uh, and that is that uh, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Mm-hmm. And, and so as you recognize, well, wait a minute, this is a spiritual attack. Uh, God says you can stand. This is in Ephesians uh, 6, 10 to, uh, 10 to 20. Uh, you can stand against this. You can come against it with spiritual weapons. Mm-hmm. And um, if you, he says, if you, uh, in First uh, 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 John uh, 5, uh, it says, if you humble yourself, Mm. Um, and resist the devil, he will flee. Right. And humble, humble isn't. I'm going to go do this on my own power. I'm doing <laughs> it. I'm doing it in the power of God. But when I mm-hmm. declare it, when I stand on that truth, you can exercise that authority. Um, and he has to flee, and this has to stop. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a, a way to approach this uh, attack of the enemy. Is basically. You know, you need to put up with it. David uh, had this great example when he fought Goliath. They remember, he shows up um, at the battle because uh, he was sent by his dad. Hey, go see how your brothers are doing. Uh, give him some food. And he says, what's going on? And they said, well, this, this giant Goliath uh, has challenged us to a duel. And they said, instead of killing everybody, <laughs> uh, why don't we just bypass all that and just get somebody from Israel and him and fight whoever wins the other country has to surrender to that uh and he's been he's been approaching that every single day uh and saying okay who are you going to send <laughs> who are you going to send uh, and Saul by the way is that it goes to fear and <laughs> fear and dread this is too tough for me right. this is too big for me and he didn't he didn't want to do it um and nobody else wanted to do it and he even offered you know tax free living and benefits uh, you know beyond it <laughs> Uh, and David makes this incredible statement um, as he looks at this and says, well, wait a minute. Based on what I know about mm-hmm. God, he makes this incredible statement um, in uh, 1 Samuel 17. How dare he defy the army of the living God? Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't need to put up with this. Um, we can come against it. And then he goes on to say, I come at you in the name and the power of God. You come at me with a sword. So you're using Mm -hmm. human things to come against me. I'm coming at you with the power and the authority of God. And and it it shows in there that he didn't say, I need to go pray about this. I need Mm -hmm. to go, God, are you going to do something here? See, he already knew it. How dare he defy the army of the living God? Uh, And so he uh, came against it and said, Um, You know, God's shown me of the power that overcomes the enemy and he doesn't have a right to do this. So I'm coming against it and I'm Mm going to I'm going to kill it. I'm going to chase it away, which he did. Um, And that's a beautiful thing to uh, recognize when you're getting under spiritual attack. Uh, My wife and I use that uh, phrase a lot. Okay, this is a spiritual attack. Mm -hmm. And we go immediately to how dare he defied the army of the living God. And we need, we, we need to uh, come against this. We don't even need to go pray about it. We just need mm-hmm. to take the authority and come against it. Uh, and of course, the, the, the other 
type of adversity, and there's lots of nuances to this, so we won't go into all of it, but um, is where I caused it. Right. Um, and the reason I caused it is I wasn't walking with God. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't following his decisions, and I made my own decisions, and I got myself more and more and more in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, I had a, a guy, executive, uh, that had worked for a large company, and um, he felt led by God to leave that company and go start a new business, mm -hmm. uh, move to a different city and start a new business, which he did. Um, and uh, as he did that, uh, he started making a series of really poor decisions about the people he got involved with, the money he was accepting, uh, even to the point of he ran up a million dollar credit card bill uh, to, to support it because he wasn't making money. Yeah. Um, and he was discouraged uh, and about ready to quit. And somebody again said, well, you know, maybe you should talk to Rich uh, and Linda. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we came and, and I said, uh, you know, what happened? You know, well, this, this, and this. And uh, I think I shared this story a little bit about, you know, he uh, decided that, okay, I'm willing to follow. And the first thing he had to get over was it was God's fault. Because mm. um, he thought, well, it doesn't, everything that's happened is God's fault. And God had to show him, uh, it wasn't me, it was you. And then when he realized that, um, uh-oh, and he, I remember him calling me up. He said, I, I understand now. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't God. That was me. After the initial instruction, I stopped mm -hmm. asking God. Right. And I just did my own thing. And I got myself in a hole. I got myself in a real pickle um, and say, okay, uh, now I guarantee that God can restore you. Now, by the way, I didn't say restore your business. I said restore you. So even if you file bankruptcy, uh, he can get on the other side of that. He can restore you and, and bring mm -hmm. you the, the bounty of life. And, uh, and so he, when he got past that point of it was my fault, and then, by the way, he had to work on letting himself off the hook. But when he did, then he said, okay, I'm willing now. Uh, I repent. Mm -hmm. And instead of me doing this myself, I'm going to follow you. And I got a mess. Mm -hmm. And God said, yeah, I know. Um, how about if you let me clean up the mess step by step by step? Are you willing to follow me? Let me do what I'm going to do. And then you, you follow my instructions. And he, he started to uh, say, I'm willing to do that. And within uh, about 18 months, he was completely out of the mess. Mm -hmm. And God just stored, he fixed everything uh, because he said, now that you're willing to do it, in this case, he did save his business. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and said, Sh follow me, follow me, follow me, uh, that, yeah, you caused this problem. Uh, you can't stand against it. See, it's not an attack of the enemy. Um, it, isn't right. even a, it isn't even a test of faith, which where you got to cooperate with God. It's like, yeah, you caused it. Uh, you created your own adversity. Right. Uh, and God says, now the, the remedy for that is you got to repent and, and understand what you've done. And then mm -hmm. come with me and believe that I'll restore it all, mm -hmm. uh, restore your life. And again, we don't know how, uh, we don't know when, so there's no formula to that. Or that, of course, then my business is going to be uh, fixed. Maybe not. Uh, he might have you end that or uh, give up that and say, I have something else for you, but I'll do it in a different way. So it's, it's you have a heart to go because you believe mm -hmm. that God's going to restore you. So. Uh, and there's there's some uh, other nuances to all this, but that's kind of the two uh, big things that, that uh, we need to, or three big things we need to understand is, is it a test of faith? Well, that's God doing it, and we got to cooperate with that. If it's the enemy, we have the power to stand against it, and he's got to flee and end it. If it's me that I caused it, now I have to walk with him to let me restore it. And remember, it's rebuilding, repairing. It takes a while. It takes a while to do mm -hmm. that. Do you have any other thoughts or comments about that? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, I think, you know, when you're looking at those three different things, sometimes the hardest part is discerning which of the three we're looking at. Yeah. And so, um, and even that, I think we need to remember God can tell us which one it is. Exactly so right. we see something's coming against us and we need to know, okay, is this something that, that he's testing my faith and that it's just part of this growth process? You know, is it a spiritual attack or is it something I've brought on to my, by myself? And, um, and so being willing when we see something to first recognize that there is some sort, you know, something's going on 
and then going to him and asking him what it is. And then we step into, okay, now you've told me what it is. Don't hijack it right there. Then go back and ask the next, next question. Okay. This is what it is. You've told me this is what it is. God, what do you want me to do? What do you have to say about it? Yeah. So in each step, we've got to stay with him though. And I think it's so important. I love um, your emphasis. I don't honestly feel like we talk enough about repentance these days. I think a lot of times we're, we are so eager. um, I don't know, not to scare people off or something (laughs) that we, that we don't want to use that word because that word carries so such heavy connotation, but I, I would love us to learn to flip that word away from this heavy connotation to this invitation to abundance. Right. Because that, you know, when you look at the word repent, uh, you know, the re is a returning and pent comes from that word root that is actually the same word, word root that comes from pinnacle. It's returning to a higher place. And so when we look at, re- at repenting, it is we're, we're doing an about face, we're returning, but we're returning to what is best and none better. We are repenting and saying, you are God and I am not. Right. And let's go there and just submit and surrender each step of the way because we trust that that truly is best. Right. Um, and the, uh, the beauty of repentance, um, because it's a spiritual truth and it's necessary. Uh, mm-hmm. that, Absolutely. You know why? And this we're talking about believers now. Uh, we know that when somebody comes to know Christ, they have to repent per se and say, I, re- I recognize that I uh, am not capable of having a relationship with you. I'm not good enough. So I uh, surrender that uh, and willing to receive what you've done for me at the cross. Um, right. and, they, and they become now a believer because I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. As a believer, uh, you now have uh, another... Uh, opportunity and a continual opportunity uh, that, you know, why would you need repentance? And see, we tend to look at it as I sinned. I know I did something wrong. So I've got to go fix that um, and confess it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if I fix it, then maybe God will allow me to come back and and have, you know, a relationship again. And he says, no, he said it's simple repentance, uh, and repentance is, uh, it doesn't matter what the sin is, it's that mm-hmm. you've, been, you've been either uh, going your own way, and it's leading, right. leading to sin, or um, I'm experiencing sin, and I've tried mm-hmm. to stop it, you know, like pornography, mm-hmm. or anger, or fear, or anxiety. Okay, I know this isn't right. I've tried to work on it. I've tried to work on it. I've tried to work on it. Um, I've confessed it, but nothing matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and God said, yeah, because um, you you didn't repent. Um, right. And repent, as you said, is turning around. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's returning to the life of God. Uh, so when you repent, uh, it's doing a 180 and saying, I recognize that um, I've been operating in the flesh. I've been operating mm-hmm. in self. That's the issue. I, right. re- I repent from that. And instead of me continuing to figure things out on my own, I'm going to return back into the relationship with you, which then he mm-hmm. says, welcome back. There is no now condemnation and let's go. Uh, yeah. Let's move forward in your life. Um, and I'm not asking you to go fix anything. And he says, sometimes I'll start to put my finger on, well, this is why you exit. This is why you go into the self because there's mm-hmm. a pattern there. And he'll say, well, let me heal that up. Okay, great, fantastic. But again, even there, it's, well, I got to go be with him and just walk with him and let him do the work. Right. And that's what, you know, that's what the abiding is all about. So that yeah. I take away that burden of, I've got to fix this in order for it to become right. And God says, you can't mm-hmm. fix it. All you can do is truly repent uh, and come back to me. And so people mm-hmm. talk a lot about, I hear, I hear people talk about confession. I confessed mm-hmm. it. I confessed it. Uh, and right. I say, well, here's what you've done. You stopped. You confessed. You did a 360. Mm-hmm. And you just kept yeah. going. And you kept going. A lot going. of times we do that. We confess, we ask for forgiveness, and then we turn around and we do it again because yeah, and, we're still not wanting to get out of our own way. Right, right. We, we want to stay in self. We're, in still in, we're still in the self. So we've actually, yeah, yeah okay, I stopped. I confessed. Um, I asked for forgiveness. Uh, and then I keep going. And yeah. God says, well, 
<laughs> you haven't repented. Right. Because why? Well, you haven't come back to me. And that's the only mm-hmm. remedy uh, is would right. just, just come on back to me. So like, like these couples that are a guy that's struggling with his business, um, he had to get to the point of, okay, I caused this. And mm-hmm. I've been doing it on my own. And so instead of him saying, I confess that and keep doing right. it on his own, he had to truly repent. Right. Okay, I turn around. I'm going to come back to you and follow you now because you're the mm-hmm. only one that can resolve this. So I'll right. just do it. I'll just do it your way and trust you that you're going to lead me and guide me into your solution. Um, and that's the beauty of, of the life. And as you mentioned, that um, as we have these adversities come against us, um, it's not universal. There's different types and there's different remedies. Mm-hmm. Um, we need God, if we have a heart to hear, well, God, what's the source of this? Right. Uh, what is causing this? And, he'll, and he, see, his, his role is to tell you. Because if it's mm-hmm. an attack of the enemy, he's got to show you, well, this is an attack of the enemy. Now you can stand mm-hmm. against it. You caused it. Right. You can't stand against it. You're going to have to walk with me into the resolution. If it's a test mm-hmm. of faith, don't fight me. Just recognize that I'm showing you that you don't believe what I'm saying. So right. stay with me. I'll give you the faith to, to believe it. So it's really mm-hmm. important to receive the insight, the discernment. And that's what God promises. I'll, I'll give it to you yeah, if you have absolutely. a heart to give And by the way, uh, this is where the body comes up. Uh, so you could go mm. to your spouse. You can oh, go to good. you can go to other people around you and say, "This is happening to me. Could you help me discern the source of that?" Mm-hmm. And through their spiritual growth and their spiritual insight and their heart to follow you to seek, uh, okay, let's see what God is saying about that. Together, you're going to get there. So He doesn't even mm-hmm. leave it up to you alone. He says, "I'll I'll help you with other people that will help confirm." Right. Yep, this this is it. And I tell you, just hearing you talk about having the other people, um, that has been something that I think has been so hard in the midst of COVID um, isolation. And I really feel like isolation is the enemy's playground. Yeah. And and that is something that we have seen in so many cases with churches shutting doors or you know people not having their normal sense of community um, and those Christian believers being together. I think that's one of the sweetest things, you know, as Dan and I have stepped into the Living Waters leadership team, having a group of, of abiding Christians yeah. to do yeah. life with, yeah. um, to process these tough things when we're not necessarily seeing clearly um, and, and just being able to come alongside each other. That's a huge gift. And so I really, I, I would challenge anybody listening today don't neglect the gift that God has given us in community with other abiding believers. If you don't have that group, find that group, make that group, start that group, <laughs> whatever you need to do. Yeah. But um, that community is so important, yeah. you know. And we believe with what's coming up with the constant uh, opposition to the church, mm-hmm. that small group is going to be yeah. critical. Uh, and even even new home churches or how you're going to function right. as a small group. And that's one of the reasons why we're putting all our courses online because it, mm-hmm. it you, and you'll see it when you participate in it, it's, it's actually done in a group setting. Um, right. And so it's healthy for you to have your group, you know, start to be willing to say, okay, let me understand some of these truths and we can process that together. Yeah. Uh, and so you can go to the website and uh, look at these courses that are available. And we want to encourage you that um, mm-hmm. it's, it's really well, best if you can do it in a small group Mm -hmm. uh, because you you can together, you know, begin to process it. Uh, And as Kathy and I, you know, just spent some time actually answering somebody's question about adversity, uh, we want to encourage you uh, to uh, ask your questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, As you uh, have them come up, uh, you're going to have lots of, hey, what about this? And we want to talk about those. We want to process those together. So uh, on YouTube, just put in the comment section and we'll get them and process those together. And then if you're listening by podcast, you can email us at questions at afjministry.com, questions at mm-hmm. afjministry.com, uh, and we'd love to process those. Well, uh, Kathy, let's get into uh, another element, uh, and this is important as you're seeking God answers for things. Uh, there's mm-hmm. this wonderful story uh, about Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10. So if you'd uh, read that for us, let's let's look at that and, and the impact of that as we uh, learn what it means to walk with God. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. 
And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. (laughs) But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Yep. So, um, uh, great, great story. Um, Mary and Martha lived in Bethany. Uh, this is, um, uh, a few hours outside of Jerusalem. Uh, and their brother, of course, was Lazarus. Um, so by this time, they had gotten to know him, and they did understand with their limited perspective that he was the Son of God, the Messiah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't fully understand all of it, but they that they understood he was the Son of God, and we love spending time with him. Uh, Jesus spent most of his uh, ministry in Galilee, mm-hmm. uh, which is um, about anywhere from a three to four day walk away from Jerusalem. Uh, and that's where he spent most of his ministry, which is, by the way, very, we've been there and given tours. Uh, mm-hmm. Galilee is beautiful. Uh, and it's actually wow. fairly similar uh, to what Jesus would have experienced. I mean, there's some roads and there's cars, but the beauty of that place is such that um, it's still kind of the same way. Uh, so you could see why he loved being there. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he went to Jerusalem for the feast so these are uh, six times a year he would have to walk back and forth to Jerusalem. Uh, and that's where he had his encounters with the Pharisees and, and all that. Well, um, he's come, he's going into Jerusalem, and he uh, sends his disciples on, and he stays with Mary and Martha in their home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, Mary, Martha, is uh, working and serving and doing activities. So if we ask her, Martha, what are you doing? What what would she have said? Oh, she thought she was doing great things. She was getting things ready. I mean, goodness, Jesus was coming as in her house. She wanted to serve him. She wanted to honor him. Her heart was in the right place. She wanted to be doing all these things to prepare and to to treat him well, to be a good host. Yeah. Yeah. She'd say, Well, I'm serving the Messiah. Yeah. Uh, and she thinks it's so critical of the all the activities she's doing. She tells Mar- Mary, get up and help me. <laughs> and Mary says no. Um, and so she says to Jesus, what does she say to Jesus? Tell her to help me. Tell You tell Mary <laughs> to get up and help me. Um, and Jesus says, Martha, Martha, mm-hmm. uh, you are anxious. You are troubled by many things. Um, and it's distracting to you. Mm. And uh, the Greek uh, phraseology there is, um, I know that you would say you're serving me but actually you're serving yourself. Oh, Uh, you've decided what you think is important and you're, and you're Mm -hmm. engaged in these activities, these tasks, and you think you're serving me by doing these tasks. And because of it, you are believing that you'll get recognition for that, which is why you said, you know, have Mary help because look at what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And Jesus, don't you appreciate what I'm doing? Uh, and given me, uh, you know, praise and accolades. Uh, and he said, uh, you've made a mistake, uh, young lady. Uh, he said, uh, you've decided, and here's the mistake. You've decided on your own what you think you should do. Mm. Um, and so right. as we translate this, particularly as you look at uh, being in the word, um, well, you've decided on your own what you're going to do. I'm going to read mm-hmm. through the Bible in a year. Um, I'm going to read a devotion every day. I'm going to go study this book. I'm going to this Bible study at church. Um, this is what I have decided to do. And isn't that a good thing uh, for how I'm going to serve Jesus? And, uh, and I should be praised for that. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, no, you've missed it because you didn't ask me. See, you didn't ask me what I would have you do. Right. Um, And not that any of those things are bad things, No, but they are, if it's not what he's calling us to do. Right. So it's that, that asking and interacting, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, And because, because even in here where they're doing this activity, see, there would have been a moment when, Mm -hmm. yeah, they had to get up and prepare meal. Actually, Jesus would have gotten up with them. 
and said, let's, mm. let's all go, let's all, let's all go do this now. Now it's time to go do that. So it's not saying there's no uh, use for that. Right. It's, it's just as he so uh, chooses, as he so invites us. Um, and he said, uh, Mary uh, is understanding this better. And what is she doing? Well, she's sitting at his feet. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the picture there isn't uh, Jesus is standing and she's sitting at his feet and he's given her a three point message. Uh, it's that, uh, you remember they, they didn't have chairs. Uh, they basically had, uh, blankets and, and what they would do would sit and recline on these, uh, blankets or these, uh, cushions. Um, and Jesus's feet would be extended. And then Mary next to him would be sitting in the same way with her feet at the feet of Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. and what is he saying? Well, Mary and I are having dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mary and I are, she's learning some things of what I want to speak to her about. And she's asking me questions and she's uh, interested in, well, what about now? And how does that work? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm explaining things to her and I'm asking her questions. Uh, and so we're in dialogue together uh, and she's sitting at the feet, having dialogue, abiding. That's what we call abiding mm -hmm. is you're in relationship, you know, with Christ. And he says something about it. Uh, he says, Mary has done what? He's chosen what's chosen. best. Okay, so yeah, what, what, is that, chosen it. what does that imply? It's a choice. Well, it, it is a choice, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so she could have done the same thing and gotten up and started working. Um, and I'm not going to force you to, but she chose the better thing, and it's not going to be taken from her because this is really critical. Mm -hmm. um, I need to give her some insight, wisdom about her life that she's caring about. That's way more than important than all the activity that you're doing, knowing that, well, we'll get to some activity. But mm -hmm. first is sitting at the feet of Jesus. So when you're abiding uh, in the word and you're spending time with him, he said, that's what it looks like. Uh, one mm -hmm. is that uh, you stay in what we call camping out in one place. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm showing you truth, let's say we talked about uh, learning forgiveness, you don't say, okay, I read it, and now I'll go off to the next thing. Right. It's no, do you have it? Do, are you experiencing it? You need to stay in those verses and dialogue with God through that until what? Until you have forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really, you know, you're, you're, the words are eternal life. The words are learning him. Uh, so you that is so antithetical to what we're used to though. Yeah. I mean, we tend to so much, okay, okay. I'm going to read this. Got it. Let's move on to the next thing. I need to learn more. I need to know more, more, more. And that more is better rather than the depth of yeah. what he wants to teach us in, in the one thing. And so th that's something that we really have to be intentional with because, you know, most of us or kind of ADD when it comes to God, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so when you yeah. say, you know, see, that's the, the comment and you said it, well, I got it. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and as I, as I work with people, uh, they say that I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I say, uh, what do you have? <laughs> well, I read it. It made sense to me. I got it. Right. Well, I say, let me go a little bit further. Are you experiencing it? Mm -hmm. And see, the answer is, well, not really. Right. Okay, well, you, what you say you got. And is, often don't even know what that would look like. Right, right. Because you, you've got it here. I read it. It makes sense. I can, I can rectify it in my mind, but I, not living it out, not seeing it in day-to-day -day life. I don't even know what that would look like necessarily. Right, right. Um, and, uh, and so when you say you got it, see, you really don't. Uh, mm -hmm. because you haven't experienced it yet. And abiding is sitting at his feet uh, saying, um, I'm going to stay with you throughout the days until I receive this. And that's why we call camping out in a mm -hmm. passage or scripture or some cross-referencing, which we'll show you, uh, is um, it's not going from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. It's we'll stay here abiding in this truth that God said, I want us now uh, give you life. I want to give you mm -hmm. answers. I want to give you uh, things that you can experience and you got to stay with me. And, and Mary mm -hmm. has char chosen the better thing. Uh, and so as you think about that, here's a question. Um, are you uh, getting up in the morning and first thing, are you spending time with, with God? Uh, mm -hmm. And what we say is 
Uh, it just, just needs 20 minutes. Um, if every day you're camping out in the same scripture, processing and journaling, which we'll show you what that looks like, uh, what these scriptures are saying to you, and you're inter interacting with God about it, and you stay there every day just for 20 minutes. And then tomorrow you look back at your journal, okay, what, where was I? And what, what does God want to say to me today? And tomorrow the same thing, and tomorrow the mm -hmm. same thing. Uh, is you say, I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus because that's the better thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll have activity. Yeah, I got to go to work. Yes, I have things to do. Yep, that's true. Uh, and he wants to sanction that. But he doesn't want you to put that in front of spending time with me. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the better thing. Uh, and the question, you know, that really comes up, uh, which I ask people in the retreats that we have, uh, why aren't you spending more time in the word? Mm, yeah. What do, you, what do you think are some of the reasons? I think a lot of times people just haven't found that it's valuable to them. Is, is the reality. We spend time on what we think is most important and what brings the most value to us. And so if we've just been checking boxes and not been able to translate what we're reading into living it out, um, we haven't found value in it. And so then it gets dead and dry and we don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And why, why isn't it valuable? Well, we're not staying where he's speaking life for one thing, you know, and so learning to you know, learning to actually take it fully in and allow him to, to do his work. But we find value in other things because we're not coming under what he's speaking and really allowing him to work it in us. Yeah. And so, um, uh, what does he say about that? Is that, um, well, you've, you've made an effort, but you mm -hmm. didn't find it valuable because why it didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. It didn't impact my life at all. Um, I read it. Actually, I read it, and, and remember we talked about law. I read it as things I got to go do, and I can't even do those things. Right. So it gets me discouraged all by itself. But I've yeah, never found it, like, like you guys are saying, uh, you know, uh, most people in our audience are saying, I haven't found that to be valuable. I don't, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, you say it, it's guaranteed. I, I don't see that, which then if right. you don't see it, then I'm not going to spend any time in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as we look at you and, and we could say, you know, we're going to walk around, uh, you know, invisible for two weeks and watch what you spend your time on, your money on, et cetera. Well, you've determined what is valuable. Right. And that's where you that's where you spend your energy because um, you've determined that. Why? Well, because it right. matters. It, it, it does have impact in my life. And right. we're saying if you learn this abiding, it will become so valuable that you'll never stop doing it. Right. Um, and you could, you could give testimony to that when you and Dan learned it, you oh, know, here, goodness, here we are yeah. four, four or five years later. Why are you still doing it? Oh, I couldn't live without it at this point, <laughs> you know, How come? Um, because literally it is life. It's that, you know, for me, it's more than even just instruction for the day. It's that knowing I am fully connected to the God of the universe and that he's walking with me every step and he cares about the details. And I want to know what he has to say. I don't want to face my day and not know what he had prepared for me. That's my, that's your, when you are talking about it's life, that is my lifeline, yeah. you know? Yeah. So have you sat, as you've sat at the feet of Jesus, you've learned that, well, this is so valuable that I cannot not do it now. Right. Uh, right. And that, and that's what we're trying to encourage you is that uh, your time in the word can flip from a, meaningless, intellectual, doesn't really matter to uh, the life of what God mm -hmm. would have for you to say, let me guide and lead you and transform you and change circumstances and things that I can do, which is to, mm -hmm. bear, to bear fruit. Um, and uh, he said, no, Mary chose the better thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and Martha, are you willing to reconsider that it's not what you do for me, it's what I'm going to do for you? Mm -hmm. uh, and walk with me and sit with me and enjoy me. And we'll get to the task uh, later. But don't serve yourself by thinking, isn't that a good idea? Keep asking mm -hmm. me, well, how would you have me receive the words that which are spirit in life, which are eternal life uh, to come into my life? Uh, so it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an incredible truth uh, that it's just a choice you have to make. Am I going to sit at the feet of Jesus or not? Uh, he won't force you to, uh, but right. he invites you to. So, I tell you, and I know you've seen this time and time again with the number of retreats we've led now over the last four or five years, 
it is amazing to me to watch the transformation in the couples and the individuals who, you know, literally the same thing you will hear time and time again from them. Um, I can't believe I didn't know what I had right. in, in spending this time in the word. I always thought it was just something I had to quick check off and now I wouldn't miss it, you know, and I know ladies that'll say, you know, when we, we meet on our Tuesday morning groups and I have such sweet ladies that I meet with, but they love their time in the word, yeah. love, can't get enough. No. And wish they had more time to be able to spend in it. Right. You know, that's, that's right. it's not that it's dry. It's not that it's boring. It's not that it's something to do. It's the best conversation they have all day long. Yep. You know? So um, as we go forward here uh, in our next sessions, we're actually going to uh, give you some practical helps. Okay. How do I do that? Um, mm -hmm. How do I abide in the word? And we're going to give you some very specific uh, insight about here's how you approach this. Um, and it'll be, it'll be quite, quite fun and quite joyful for you. And as we mentioned before that, uh, we love to answer questions. We answered one today about adversity. Uh, we would, uh, encourage you to, uh, on the YouTube to, uh, put, put in your questions in the comments section. And, uh, for you who are listening is, uh, send us an email at questions at afjministry.com questions at mm -hmm. afjministry.com. And we will, um, uh, take the time and uh, put them in order uh, and uh, start to address these uh, that are personal. And that's what we want to get to is answering your questions that you've got mm -hmm. as you say, well, okay, I heard what you said. Now to help me understand deeper. And mm -hmm. that's what, that's what we'd love to do. So we'd love to do it. Absolutely. So, so Kathy, we'll look forward yeah. to uh, the next day. So. Absolutely. And if you have found this encouraging today, be a friend and tell a friend, make sure you pass on the word. Um, for others to join the podcast or the broadcast. We'd love to hear from everyone. Yeah, we sure would. So uh, Kathy, it's good seeing you and uh, look, forward you to, look forward to tomorrow and see everybody tomorrow. All right. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.